Maestro, first of all, thank you very much uh, for giving us a little bit of your time. It's good to see you hale and hearty, looking strong, and almost always in your Ghana colors. Proud Ghanaian. But today, your presence here marks a remarkable milestone in the annals of uh, Ghana history. Today, the Controller General of the Ghana Immigration Service is charting a course, a course that would instill discipline, peace, and of course, foster unity among Ghanaians as we get ready for the December 7th uh, elections. In your heyday, you had the discipline, you had the patience, you had the character, but of course, you also had the dedication. At this time, what would be your message to Ghanaians as we get ready for a peaceful December 7th elections? Well, before I say something, I'll take the opportunity to thank the Controller General. Thank him very much for giving me the opportunity to assist this peaceful march. Um, I mean, we are all expecting a peaceful elections, and I think he has shown the leadership that he has what he takes to control the entire borders of our country, and he has made it in style. So this occasion demands me to be present to give him that support. So I took all this opportunity to thank him very much for this initiative, for keeping our country safe. Having said that, I mean, elections, we are all here to make sure that the elections goes well peaceful without any incident mm. so uh, the whole country should listen and be very patient we all we always say that patience move mountains we should just be patient and allow our leaders mm. to do what it takes to bring peace to our country He's using sports, particularly football, a sport that you love, a sport that took you near and far to the rest of the world, a sport that has made Abedi Ayu Pele an icon when it comes to football. Again, do you think and are you, do you share the same opinion that yes, football can really unite a country? Well, it, I mean, football is the key to the heart, to the people. And you all know when this, uh, in the 90s, when this Yugoslavian war, I know president of FIFA at that time, President Brata, organized the World Eleven against Europe in Kosovo and when we got there and driving through the whole city there were guns firing but we were brave enough and we were lucky that when they said we've all arrived in the city the guns were silent they put so, their guns down yes and the stadium was full but the stadium was fooled with military men and everybody, everybody has his guns down and it tells you what football can bring to the people. So it's really true that uh, football can unite a nation, football can bring people together and football is number one peacemaker in the world. Football number one peacemaker in the world. You have been there, you've done that, and so obviously one has to listen to what advice and opinions come from uh, a chosen one like you. 
he has also mentioned the fact that, and we'll digress just a little bit for a second, he's mentioned that he's a lover of sport, particularly football. His passion is the color blue and white, which is Accra Great Olympics. Your passion is also blue and white, if I'm not mistaken, which is Real Tamale United, where everybody associates you from. But you think the levels of football now, as we see it on the local scene, is something to write home about? Well, <clears throat> I think time changes, you know, and this, we are talking about three decades. So, whatever it is, we, should, we shouldn't look back. Mm -hmm. We should just look forward and work very hard to achieve whatever we want to achieve. Mm -hmm. What it takes to be a, a great football team or a great football nation is to work hard and put your house into order and make sure that you get results. And that is all that it takes to be a good team in all over the world. You put your house together and then you make sure. So for me, I agree with him that football is one of the key to ensure that uh, uh, the teams in the country. And I can tell you, I, I was... I was uh, playing for Tamaliria United at that time. But Olympics, when I'm in, I'm in Accra, mm -hmm. I train. And this, I must thank Accra Great Olympics for giving me the opportunity to be training with them till I catch up a flight and go to the north and play with my team. So it is something that um, I have always done when I was a kid. When I get to Accra, then I train with Accra Great Olympics which has given me the opportunity to be where I am today. So I, I always remember that. So something concerned Accra Great Olympics, I have a great respect for Olympics and I, I, I take my time mm -hmm. when you know, I'm dealing with Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> Maestro, it's always a pleasure, you know, having a chat with you. We will look for an opportune time where we can talk a lot more about some of the history behind the various successes of the various teams, not only individuals, but of course you have seen it all. And so I'm sure there are some stories we will have to listen to and you would love to share with the public. But for now, we say thank you very much. God bless you, sir. Thank you, sir.